Okay, um, what I'm going to do first of all is go through all of the different um, surface components. So just, I've got this very simple scene set up um, with a number of test objects all in different layers, but they all share the same surface. So I can quickly and easily show you what they all do. So in, in the node editor here is your material components. You will notice um, there's generally three types. There's the one that are untyped, emission and subsurface scattering. They're special cases. The rest are either all BRDF or BTDF. And I'll show you the difference between them all. So first of all, uh, start with the top one. If I just plug that in. What this is, is a pure specular node. It supports uh, Fresnel input, um, which I will explain later. But that just to show you that all this is, is if you plug this in with 100% white, as I've got the 100% um, white in the color, which is as default. And the roughness uh, is exactly the same as reflection blur. So if I was to increase that to 100, it almost looks like a diffuse surface, 50%, 10% starts to look like almost like a pure mirror. And 0%, which I don't recommend, it will give you almost 100% exactly pure mirror, but won't look especially attractive. Um, because you won't get any specular hotspots, which we're getting lots of little tiny ones. Now, I will do all of the BR BRDFs. So you have Blin, GGX, Lambert, Oranaya, and the specular on its own. So let's just quickly go through those. Now, you'll probably be familiar with some of these already. A Lambert is a diffuse, plain diffuse color. And I will maybe add a slight, I'll, 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 let me add a, a constant here just to darken that up. So there's just a pure Lambert diffuse. Um, as, as you can see, it, it looks like a normal diffuse, just 100% diffuse. Now the next one is Oranaya. That is the rough surface. So at the moment that looks very, very similar. If I increase the roughness to 100, I'll just put that in just to show you the, the difference. Um, this is what a lot of people call a moon shader because it has, a, uh, it, it has the very, very flat microfaceted look of the moon. You've got a, a almost like a bright limb occurring here and it, it darkens slightly in the center. It gives it a very porous, soft, absorbent look um, for basically just a very simple um, shader. The next one up is Specular. Now this is effectively um, the same as all of these other ones, but it has no roughness. It's just a 100% mirror. So if you wish to have a 100% mirror with no roughness whatsoever, this is the perfect material. It also will save you render time because it only takes one sample per intersection. These are all multi-sampled, so therefore they, they have lots of rays are sent out to get the specular highlights. Now, GGX is the one you'll probably be familiar with if you've used Lightwave 2018 already. Um, this is the, uh, and I'll just move this out of the way. Um, this is the standard specular that comes with the principal BSDF. It's uh, what we would call the cutting edge because it gives a beautiful soft fall off, as you can see here. If I was to compare that to a, a let's see, a Blin. A Blin is the older model we used to have in Lightwave previously, 2015 and below. It's got a slightly similar look a very hard hot spot with a little bit of a bleed off um the values won't match and this actually uses glossiness so i can say if i increase this to 100 percent glossiness it'll be like a pure mirror and down whereas the other speculars all use a i mean a, a, um, a roughness 
that actually is coming from the environment. It's not it's not the bleed off. Now the Beckman and GGX are very similar. If I put in a very similar value, so there's 10% in Beckman and I will put in 10% in GGX. You might be hard pressed to see the difference. So I'll just give that a little bit of a time to resolve on the sphere. So that's the very, very tight white specular and slightly blurry on the GGX. You have a much softer blended and more realistic with a tail. That's what's called in the in the industry. I mean, you could you could tweak the roughnesses to get these to match. This is a slightly higher end, better looking Fresnel um, specular, um, but it it is a bit more costly in terms of rendering. So if you wanted to, uh, you know, you can hardly tell the difference between them. Beckman is probably the, the best one to use. And um, I think that's covered all the, the BRDFs. The, let's have a quick look. You've got a number of BTDFs. Again, this is a pure transmission. It doesn't have any reflection whatsoever. So of course it will look slightly wrong. And you have your uh, roughness value, your anisotropy, if you wish to have that refraction index, I could make that one and it will look like it doesn't exist apart from the fact that we need to have more depth in the scene rays but i'll just increase that to 1.5 uh, again we have a ggx btdf which will look quite similar Again, there's no there's no reflection, so it's just pure refraction. Hence, we are getting some internal refraction errors, and there's no reciprocal um, bouncing, and we're running out, of course, of depth rays. And finally, there is the specular BTDF, and again, this is exactly the same as the BRDF, in that put this in, and it only is one sample very very brutal very basic but cheap now there is one more but this is a special case i'm going to plug it in and it will uh, make you go what well, what's wrong with this so the lambert btdf you think well lambert is a diffuse shader and it's a transmission so i'll plug that in and it looks to be an error well what actually this is it's a translucency shader so I will just plug in our nice standard material and go to this little little square here I have set up. Again, I'll get the Lambert BTDF and plug that in. This is a standard material for double-sided single polygons. So this has got double-sided. It doesn't actually need to be ticked, but it is forward-facing. If you rotate around the scene, You'll see you've got the lights coming through from the sun and actually transmitting through because there's a little bit of glow here, which is rather attractive. Um, now, of course, you can mix that up with other materials, um, which is the next thing that I'm going to be doing uh, just to show you. But I'll, I'll leave that on because that's exactly the type of thing that that's for. And course there's a couple more materials here the subsurface scattering works very similar to the other subsurface scattering it's just on its own so if I plug that in you will get a very very deep scatter because of the scale in the particular case it's very very blurry because the distance in this case is a little bit too high so if I make that simply 10 millimeters, perhaps a little bit less waxy, but a lot more resolution is going to be visible. The light is not transmitting quite so far before it bounces around and comes back out again. 
and that will work exactly the same as the other subsurface scatterer which comes as part of principled. Okay, um, that's all of the material components. Oh, except I did forget one, of course, emission. That is just simply a luminous material. You can adjust the color. Let's make that a nice orange. And it's a pure solid color that emits for interaction with radiosity, obviously. You can, um, if you get a, let's see, a, I'll make that color a nice green. Get a vector multiply, so maths vector multiply. Oh no, scale, that's the one I want. Plug that into the vector, because vector and color is the same in this case. That into emission and then increase the scale, make it perhaps 600%, and that just scales the color, which is how you can use that one. It's a very simple material, but it's perfect if you want to start mixing it up with other materials. If we didn't have this, then you couldn't mix luminosity with all of the other material components, so it seems slightly frivolous, but it's very important. Okay, uh, that's all of the material components. I'll now start to break down how you would actually use these and mix these together. Okay.